something, you know. Tell you. Like Saints attacking everybody. Yeah. On the loose. Not going to Oh. Oh. <laughs> Lord God the Father, just ask you to bless this time, Lord, as we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ as the Word, Lord God, and the King James Bible as the Word. Lord God, may we not, may I not be wrong. Lord God, I pray you put my sins under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that I may be a clean vessel now for you, of you. And Lord, uh, with the earshot of people here, Lord, to hear, Lord, may you accomplish what you have set forth in our ears and our hearts today. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. So, John, chapter 1. John, chapter 1. So, what we've been talking about is light. We'll pick up in verse 6. That there was a man sent from God... His name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. That's our subject. And all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. And that's what our subject has been for the last few weeks. And I've taken you through the book of Acts to show you people who were in darkness, who have been given light, and that... Some people rejected it. Some people said, well, let me hear a little more. Some people outright just received the light and were saved. And we looked at imaginations last week. We saw in Genesis 8, even before the, the flood, man's imagination is wrong. It's wicked. It's wild. It's evil. That's why the Bible speaks of the heart. With the heart, man believes on the righteousness. It's not your mind. It's not what you think. And when biggest things, when you deal with people, you witness to them, it will be, oh, I think. I don't care what you think. It's what does the Bible say? That's true. I think about a lot of things. And our thoughts can be sins. We've talked about that. But we're going to look at Romans 1, verse 21. As the wind turns the pages for me. <laughs> and we're going to move to the heart today. Because after the light shines, the very next thing for a person to be is his heart. Because in Romans chapter 10, when it comes to salvation with the heart, man believeth. So Romans chapter 1 verse 21. The light shines in the heart. Because that when they knew God, we've already explained this, that Every person is born with a revelation there is a God. That's light. We're still on the light subject. What do you do with that light? Do you want more battery? Do you want more power of that light to shine more and more and more and more? That's Bible reading. That's studying. That's prayer. Or do you like, no God, I don't believe you. I don't want anything to do with you. Click, it goes off. Because that when they knew God, and this is talking about unsaved people, when they knew God, unsaved people. This is talking about an atheist. When you knew God. I don't know if there's a God. You did. You turned off that light. They glorify Him not as God. Neither were thankful. Okay, with the light. But became vain in their imaginations. That was last week. This week. And their foolish heart was darkened. Why? Because when they knew God, they glorify Him not as God. They did not give God the thanks. They did not give God the glory. Now this nation as a Christian nation under George Washington, Thanksgiving Day was proclamation that we are giving thanks to the Almighty God. I don't know if he believed in Jesus, but to the Almighty God from the work of the pilgrims for, for keeping them alive during that harsh winter and for the Indians helping them all that. We're going to give one day to honor to that God. And from those people, we have a nation. And we've gone from today, there is no God. God is science. He's education. He's sex. He's anything but God. And now we are going to a nation that is darkened. Why? Because this is not God, but this is God. It's our God. It's our religion. 
So from that fact is our wicked imaginations, and when we reject God, we have a foolish heart, and that heart becomes darkened. And yes, that can happen to a born-again Bible-believing Christian. You can get along in there. You can start, you know what, I'm, I'm, I don't want to read no more. I'm tired of reading. i got other things to do. Prayer life, God's not answering my prayers. He, he's not listening to my prayers. I'm going to give that up. And even still, you can go into a church that's worldly, and admire the doctrine of that church, and you can have the lights turned out right there, too. And that's what Satan's doing to the churches today. He's entering in because Jesus is standing outside the door knocking, Revelation chapter 3. Satan's inside, and he's darkening Christians. And the most popular thing today is, well, I'm a Christian. And I had someone tell me the other day, well, I'm a Christian, I may not act like it. Really? Do those... Does that compound second sentence go together? I like an ice cream with chocolate ice cream. Now, I'm a Christian, but I, I don't act like it. That's a darkening heart. Mm -hmm. It's a foolish heart. So, there's a foolish heart. And in the Bible, you do not want to be a fool. There's only one or two places in the Bible ever a fool is good. And it says that if a fool were to keep his mouth shut, whereas somebody opens their mouth all the time, then a fool is good. But all the places, mostly, except two places, fool is terrible. So when we look at Psalms 14.1, we're going to see an illustration of, in the Bible, of a fool and his heart. Psalms 14.1. Now, when someone gets saved, born again, newborn babe in Christ, they're not a fool. They're simple. Mm -hmm. And you come out of your simplicity by reading, by studying, like you went to school. You, When you, your mother and your father taught you things, this is how you drink from a sippy cup. This is how you eat your peas. All right, we're going from ground up, mushy peas. We're going to start bringing you to whole peas. This is how you sit. Then they prepare you for potty training and all that. you got to be grown up. Only a child that can't do it, and they probably they don't like this word, but I'm going to say it because I don't care about the world. If a child can't develop, he's retarded. Mm -hmm. But that is not the child's own doing. Now, you can be birth defect by your, your body and its chemicals. Or you can be a retard or your own choosing because I don't want to grow anymore. I refuse. No, I'm not going to learn that. I'm going to sit back and be a couch potato and not do anything anymore in my life. I'm going to come up with an excuse. And here's one excuse. Psalms 14, 1. The fool, there it is, the fool, has said in his heart, so here's the foolish heart, there is no God. Well, that completely matched Romans 1, 21. When they knew God, and we went through the study like that, everybody's given the revelation of God. Here's a man that, God revealed to him there is a superior being. You look up the skies, you know somebody made that. At one point in the life, that guy came across, whenever in his life, I don't know what age or anything like that, but in his life, he says, one day I am going to hold to the doctrine of atheism. That was your choice. And at that moment, God turned off the light. Because you admonish another God and not God himself. And you got that foolish heart. And how important is this statement when we go to Psalms 53 verse 1? Hmm. Guys know. Guys, that's a good note to the Bible. Psalm, oh, that's Psalms 53 1. Mm -hmm. can't turn the page. Mm-hmm. Psalm 53 1. The fool has said in his heart, There is no God, verily, verily. When the Bible says something once, okay, pay attention. But when God repeats it, this is three times this statement has been said. 
in uh, Psalms 14, verse 1, backed up by Psalms 53, verse 1, you say, where it's the third place? Romans 1, 21. It's not worded as the fool has said in his heart, there's no God, but isn't that what Romans, Paul writes? So when you got somebody that comes up to you, I'm an atheist. You look at it and say, well, God says you're a fool. Here's a scripture. Now, you can't jump the gun right away when you're witnessing this stuff. Because you say, well, you know, let me tell you about Jesus. I'm an atheist. They use that as an excuse. We've had that happen one time. And when I dealt with the guy and I talked to the guy, he didn't even know what atheism was. It's an excuse that Satan puts on their lips so that we can go bye-bye and go down the road to the next person. Now, I know one man... He's my Facebook friend, and I, I keep him. I want him to see the stuff I post about God. But he is a downright, absolute atheist, knowing that there is no God, and he worships the wizards and all that kind of world. All right? That's someone, okay, I'm an atheist. You may be a good friend, but the Bible says you're a fool. But there's still some kind of light there, because he has never blown me away. Now, I've had other people deal with me, you know, and they walk away, and you know, I don't want to talk to you, shut up, and all that. But atheism has been changed to a God. And when they say, well, I don't believe in God, I'm an atheist, well, what did you say? You believe? Isn't that a source of religion? Isn't that a foundation that you believe there's no God? As much as I believe there's a God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. We both have a belief system. Now, your belief is an empty hole. Mine is, is an almighty God. But at one point in their time, they told God, I don't want it. Now, if, if you would have time, if you would deal with them and talk to them and look at their childhood, you would see somewhere along the line. They had that belief like we all did. But they got angry with God. They could not see God. God was not revelation to them by how they wanted it. And like I said, in my own personal life, God revealed Himself to me slowly by slowly. And I didn't even know. I had no idea. Now all these years later, I would be saved, my name in the Lamb's Book of Life, and trying to witness to people, trying to tell them about God. So, atheism. A fool, the fool has said in his heart. Now let's get that. It's a heart issue, atheism. It does not say head. It's not something to say, oh, I'm an atheist. Okay, well, here's my shrink. I'm an atheist, okay? Here's God's Word. And you're hearing me right now. And if it's about the Holy Spirit and it's the work of God, it's not going into your head, it's going into your heart. And the problem is, some people, that heart is stone. It has not been plowed. And the Bible speaks about witnessing, as Paul says, I have planted. What do you do? You plant a seed. Apollos have watered. You look at the heart as ground to be broken to plant seeds. And that's exactly what we do when we witness. Never do you throw a seed on the ground and you're like, okay, where's the plant? It takes time. And sometimes when that, that sower went out and sowed seeds, sometimes it was on stony ground. That's the heart. And that parable breaks off into what man is. So atheism is a heart issue. If somebody is turned from God, Matthew 12, 34. Now we're going to look at what the heart is so you can know when you're witnessing to people who's standing in front of them. In Matthew 12, 34. You're looking at a, a, a flesh when you're dealing with people. And the Bible says that God says, man judges on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Now you may have somebody so bright and wonderful and cheery. Oh, they've got to be saved. But Matthew 12, 34, old generation of vipers, How's that for a preacher? How's that for Jesus? Walks in a congregation of people and says, Oh, generation of the vipers. Serpent. How can ye, being evil, 
speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that a man shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Where did those words come from? It came from the heart. So all of a sudden, you're, you're speaking, and you throw out that cuss word. And you're like, where did that come from? That came from your heart. It's been in there. You cussed how many years before being saved? You, you're talking to somebody and you say something mean and nasty. I did not mean to say that. That was in your heart. And what comes out of your heart. So an evil person has an evil heart and there can be no good that comes out of it out of the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. So here's this wonderful, great person on the outside. And when God looks on him on the inside, yeah, you got it wrong. That guy's evil. You're either good or you're evil. And what is good that can be spoken, the only good that can be spoken to an evil man is the good news, the gospel. Uh, there are people that, you know, you go knock on someone's house, and you're knocking on the door, oh, those nice roses you have out there. Oh yeah, they're very good. I took all this time to grow it, and I used this fertilizer, and I've done this. I only buy it from this place, and all that. Can I tell you about the gospel? Oh, you know, we got to go. You just wasted your opportunity on the good news for the stupid roses. Why not just say, "I like to give you this gospel tract about the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to know if you if you ever received Him as your Savior, and then build upon that." You know, you're trying to get their attention. You don't know how long your attention span is. What if they were getting in that car, you're talking about roses, and God already knows they're going to go down the street and wreck, or have a wreck, and go off eternity. And the last thing they heard was about a room. No, get in there. How are you doing? I'm such and such, this is such and such. We want to tell you, not about our church, but we want to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. If the door slams in your face, they weren't going to listen to you if you talk about the roses, the Yankees, or whoever. See why people don't like me? I'm straightforward to the point. So, so here's another heart issue. You either have an evil heart which brings forth evil, or you have a good heart which brings forth good. And so many people, well, they're a good person. The Bible says there is none that do it good. No, not one. I'm born again, saved, love the Lord, study the Word. I go out and witness. I still have an evil heart that's inside of me that's not been taken care of because I still have First John 1, 9. I still have the ability to confess my sin because I'm still a sinner. Only a fool would say he's never sinned. But what's the goodness that comes out of my heart? I say something good from the Bible. Something that's right. That came from God. I say something evil. I say something wrong. I've cussed or maybe told a lie. What is that? That's the old nature. Uh... So, Matthew 15, 17. Matthew 15, 17. He's got a good heart, I would hear some people say. There is no good heart. Again, when we talk about heart, we're not talking about that physical or organ inside you that's pumping blood. We're talking about who, what God says, it's not what you think, it's not your mind, it's who you are. It's what's your heart. What do you love? What is important in your life? What do you set first as a standard? That's your heart. And it says, uh, do you not understand the words of Jesus? Understand. We're going to talk about the heart. The heart has understanding. That whatsoever enters in the mouth, goes into the belly, food, and is cast out into the draw, sewer. You eat something, it's going bye-bye. After your stomach digests it. 
Jesus is pretty you know, cruel, but there, there it is. But, but is a very important word in the Bible. But can be good or it can be bad. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. That's what we just read in the previous chapter of Matthew. And they defile a man. Again, where did that come from? It came from your heart. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts. I thought they were your head. Psychiatry cannot help you because they're not in the Bible. They defy the Bible and they think that, oh, this person that goes out and shoots people, there's something wrong with them with their head. Let's give them a bunch of pills and make them happy. You're not dealing with the issue. Jesus said if somebody has a problem with sin, you deal with it with their heart and not with pills. You deal it with the Bible and you deal it with your parents raising you correctly. But there are no parents today. So evil thoughts. Murders. Well, that's his generation today. What's wrong with all these murders and school shootings? I was told that this recent shooting in Florida was because the guy won a, won, lost a, a ball game or something. Because he lost, he shot the other guy and other people got in the way. Well, that guy, he didn't have the proper environment. He didn't have... No. He has an evil, wicked heart that's not saved, has not been in the Scriptures, and does not know God. He has no love because God is love. Can I get up before a school's uh, platform, before all the schools in Florida, with all the students sitting there, make sure you pay attention? Can I tell them what your condition is? Absolutely not. So there will be no answers for America. You want to condition what's going on? You put the Bible back into schools. You make it so the man can go to work, that the mother stay home, take care of the children. You get rid of all these expensive garbages all around. Put the family back in the home like they're supposed to. Put the family back at the dinner table like they're supposed to. You put prayer back in the schools. You put the Bible back in the school. You throw away Satan's messengers. You get rid of the rope. That ain't going to happen. So things aren't going to get better. Murders. Adultery. Fornications, so STD, sexual problems, are a heart issue, not a condom issue. He teach the value of marriage of one man and one woman together. It's a heart issue. Thefts. Thefts. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Because... On the cross of Jesus, next to him on the right and to the left, there were two thieves. One got saved and one didn't. I'm a klep oh, is it, kleptomaniac. No, you got a bad heart. Stop giving it another name. You have got a sin. The sin is called thieving, stealing, robbing. You're a thief. That's the name of the sin. Deal with the sin. Don't give it another name. False witness, lying. Oh, that's the for politicians and for used car salesmen and courtroom folks. Which a courtroom doesn't even make you say anymore. I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, especially on the Bible. So help me, can't say God. Because there's some atheists in the room. Or the people who don't even know God. Or they're Hindu gods. So see, there is no remedy for America because America, according to what we have said, they're saying there is no God. They're an atheistic nation. They're darkened. And look at, the, look at their heart. The heart of America. The heartbeat of America. Oh, look at this stuff. This is what's going on. Blasphemy. I've been in class for two weeks now. I have been told I cannot mention religion and I can't mention politics. Absolutely no. Okay? But I can hear the name of Jesus Christ being cursed. I can hear the name of God being dishonored. And I can't say nothing about it. And they're blasphemy. Whether they know it or not, they're blaspheming God and they're allowed to do it. But the Bible and the Christian are silenced. Because we don't want to offend anybody. And what's the issue? It's, it's the heart. You don't need a doctor. You need a Bible-believing preacher. 
You need to set up a tent and have that man preach hellfire that you smell the brimstone. As in the early years. When the early years, when they say five, six-year-old children were saved, like Bob Jones Sr., he, I believe that because it was hellfire preaching, none of the junk today. You're not going to get any results from the junk today, fairy tale, floaty tale, and lilies in the, in the church house. I don't know, everybody can say their Bible verse. You get a Tootsie Roll. Okay, get my Tootsie Roll. There's your reward. There's your reward. I got a family real trained. If I don't know where it is in the Bible, I got a, I got a husband. I got a wife and a daughter <laughs> that will speak up and say, it's over here. That's training your family. I dealt with, with a man at a position in the church. I said, you know, you said you were going to steal something of mine. And I was trying to give him scripture, and he backed away. He pulled away from me with scripture. A You're a deacon and a security guard of our church, and you said you were going to steal this in front of the two witnesses, and you rejected the word of God. I had no call for you. I'll shake your hand. That's what's wrong. As a practical joke. He said, Oh, I know where we stand now. So, we're not even done. These are the things which defile a man. Alright? You don't have to go there, but Matthew 5, 28 says, If a man looks upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, he's already committed his ghost. So, if you've got somebody you're dealing with, and they're lost, and, you know, I'm okay, God likes me and all that, you can't get anywhere. Bring them to this verse right here with the heart. Somewhere along the line, they're, they're going to fail here. And if you get a man in Daytona Beach, any man, but Daytona Beach, you ever look at a woman in a bikini? You ever look at one of those girly magazines? And you take them over to Matthew 5, 28, and say, well, look, that's adultery. And you come over here, well, you got a heart issue. And some of this stuff is in our hearts today. Given the exact moment, I will probably be prone to, to lie. Now, it would take character to stand up and say, you know, the heat of the moment, I lie. And get it right. We're prone. Because it's still in our heart. Our, we have not been given that new body, that new heart yet. And the only way you're going to shut this heart down from sin is when it doesn't pump blood, it doesn't breathe oxygen, it's not thinking, you can't see, you can't hear, you can't smell, you're dead. That is the only remedy for the sin in your life outside the rapture happening. The moment you die, the moment the rapture happens, you don't have to worry about your heart or sin anymore. But right now, we got an evil, wicked heart. So out of our heart becomes evil thoughts. You ever been alone and think, I'm going to kill that boss. I'm going to kill that instructor. I, oh, I'm what? I've had those thoughts this week. Bad ones. They're not right. They're not Holy Spirit. I've not been praying for the person. You say, well, who is that? That's the old style. That's Adam. And you got to confess. you got to get it right. Murder. Heart issues. And it's not the heart that you draw. That's not the thing. Which is a pagan symbol, but... Thefts, murders, lies, blasphemy. A psychiatrist cannot help with your head, according to the Bible, because God works on the heart. And today's help by the psychiatrist, most of the biggest thing, which is my job now, if I continue, is let's give them a pill. And the kids are sitting in the public school system, dolt out of their head. Now, Tracy, she's got great pain. She has a medication that is for pain. Problem is, the dosage is not helping her no more. She's got to up the dosage because her body is prone to that medicine. Now she's in pain. She feels it more. So what do you do when you got these kids in school? You're giving them a drug to shut them up, to keep them quiet. By the time they get middle school, you've got to give them a higher dosage. By the time they get to high school, you've got to give them the maximum dosage. And now when they're released out in the world, there's nothing going to help them. And we're coming to that time where the Bible says that there's going to be a famine. There's going to be no word of God. 
and the pills and the medication ain't gonna work because you maxed them out. Oh, I hope my daughter is gone home where the rapture by death by dying that happens. I would not want my children to raise in that generation. I'm starting to see that generation right now. Lord's coming. Oh, I hope he comes very, 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 very soon. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And they're not being taught in the schools today. Now, whether this is 645, and you know, it's on video, I don't care. Have you ever heard of rap music and how they speak? It, it's not pure English. Not like a song you could got on the radio when we grew up. A ballad or something like that. I mean, it was, it had sense, sentence structure to it. Not, I'm not promoting it. But when you hear this rap, it, it's this word, that word, don't go it again. It's broken on it. That's how they're being learned today. Taught. Taught. They can't even pronounce simple words when they're asked to call upon to read something. But they can rap out. And we've gotten God and the Bible out of schools. Now they're taking education out of the schools. It's just a babysitting service. Yeah. What they're doing is they're putting your mindset to the Antichrist that whatever the Antichrist says, I will do. Again, what is all that issue? It's the heart. Luke 6, 45. A good man, out of good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. So there is good in a heart. It will manifest itself. Give it time. Give it time. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. Give it time. For of the abundance of the heart, watch this, his mouth speaketh. You say, well, how do I know what this person is? Is he good? Is he evil? Give him time. Listen to him. Eventually, he's going to say something that will show who he is. And that's one of the things you do witnessing. We were witnessing to my grandma in the hospital, uh, the nursing home, before she died. And we're just talking and talking and talking. And finally, she says, well, you know, I went to this Roman Catholic church. Right? Okay. You have a foundation somewhere in the Roman Catholic church. Not that I ever knew. But when you're dealing with somebody, they'll say, oh, I went to this church or I had somebody bite me. And you can get where they stand in God, and then from that point, what did you do with it? Well, I left, you know, I thought the preacher was an idiot. I didn't believe all that stuff. Now you have a foundation of what the heart has done to God. Did the heart continue want to receive the light, or did it stop? And that helps you witnessing to where, where I need to go. Now, if somebody was invited to church when they were XYZ years old, it was kind of interesting didn't really understand. Well, now you, okay, we're dealing with an understanding issue. Let's bring some more light. Well, yeah, I went to my dad's testimony. Yeah, they brought me to Sunday school. Me and my brother would jump out the window and go hang out in the park all day long. Okay, I got to deal with you. You're a God-rejecting, unfearing individual. Yeah, well, I went to, yeah, it was exciting, great. And no one ever talked to me. No one ever explained. Now you're, now you're in, see, now you found out what's in that heart. You know how to deal with it. Getting some way, the more you can talk to an individual about their souls, the more you will learn. And it's better if you can get them alone. You ever want to see a conversation die, you're dealing with somebody individually. You know, Tracy and I have seen this all the time. We're, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. And we're both smiling in our heart. Man, we're getting somewhere. And if someone comes up and says, hey, come over here. Well, come on, let's go. What are you talking about? And then the balloon just pops. And when you're dealing with somebody, there was a group of people, it gets laughing, and gets joking, and it goes nowhere. But if you can get somebody talking, you've got to find out where that heart is. 
what is that heart? And like I said, we're dealing with dealing with people. You got to know where that heart is in relationship with God to know where you're going. I mean, that guy comes out and says, "I reject God. I don't want anything to do with God. I am truly an atheist." You can throw some things there, but don't waste your time. Look for the ones like, "Yeah, I want to learn. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand." And they keep on going. They're like, "Yeah, show me more. Show me. You, you got to go. Oh, come on, I want more." You exchange phone numbers, emails, something like that, and you let that go. And then as Christians, you see other Christians and they cuss and they did something. Well, that's just the old nature. We all sin, brother. We all sin, sister. I forgive you. You know? But you are, you are what your heart is. They say you are what you eat. Now see how the world throws stuff out there. You are what you, your heart is. And again, the lie is, you are what you eat. <laughs> now, Jeremiah 3.17. Jeremiah 3.17. And the thing is, we're talking about a foolish, dark, and heart. Now remember, you are going to, you are a, if I can say it, I don't, I don't, you are a candle. I was going to say flashlight. You are a candle. Okay? You are bringing light into someone's heart. Now, what is that condition, that heart, before you bring that light? we got to have understanding of who you deal with. You can't just turn them off right away. You can't, oh man, he don't want nothing to do with it. I mean, if he if he's in darkness and he's out of the light, it's like going in the kitchen, turn the light on, all the roaches run. He don't want to see that light. It's a bright light, and you got uh, you know I got to start off very easy. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Can I just share this one little piece of scripture with you? That's it. That's all. I want to give you one little piece of scripture that their hearts are truly dark. And pray about it and wait for the next opportunity. Paul says, I planted. I forced them to get sick. No. I planted. Apollos, uh, Silas. Apollos watered. So see, it's a two-step process. And God gave increase. It's a three-step process. And sometimes when we're dealing with someone, we've got to look at their heart and say, what is that heart? Is there light in that heart? Is there some kind of life in that heart that's crying out for God? Or is it a heart that says, God, I don't want anything to do with you. So, uh, Jeremiah 3.17. At that time they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord. And all nations shall be gathered unto it in the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imaginations of their evil heart. So, there's what we've been looking at. When Jeremiah is right, Je Judah in Jerusalem are they're killing prophets, they're committing adultery, fornication, they are worshiping the Queen of Heaven. They have got a church, I mean an altar on every street corner. It's a vile nation, and these are the people of God. And Jeremiah walks up to him by the word of God and says, You know what your condition is? You know what the problem with you, America? I mean Judah. You have got an evil heart that's bringing forth imagination. Somewhere right now, we've been talking about the prescription drugs and all. Someone's thinking of a new drug that they can sell to somebody just to calm them down and not deal with them in the Bible. Somewhere, somewhere, somebody right now is thinking about a weapon that they can kill more people. Somewhere right now, a guy is thinking about somebody that he does not like, and he's thinking about torturing ways of that person. Somebody right now is playing that, I want that person killed. And what is it? It's a heart issue, with it's an imagination with an evil heart, and we saw that all the way back in Genesis, before the flood, and we saw it after the flood. God's testimony to Noah, before you get in that ark, and after. Just because the flood came, that did not ruin our evil heart. Now listen, we've already talked about in these studies, and they're on the videos, we talked about just because you think it, don't think that God's not going to judge it. If you think it, you're going to be judged for it unless you put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. We saw in Matthew 7, by every idle word, you're going to be judged. If you're going to be judged by every idle word, what about every idle thought? 
Now, I'm telling you, I'll, I'll give you a little testimony of my evil heart. If, if I'm laying in bed sometimes and I don't can't sleep, I will think about how to overthrow the United States of America for the name of Jesus Christ. And I'll be thinking, this is wrong. Because this is not what Jesus would do. Because I'm tired of this nation without God. And i got to thank New Jerusalem. i got to thank the millennium. That's when Jesus takes over. But see, that's my evil thought. That's my evil heart. That's Adam. Me to confess him. you got to confess. You don't take a bill. Confess to God. Say, God, i got these problems. God, you think he's going to turn off the light if you're truly seeking him? Absolutely not. He turns off the light when you stop seeking him. So, when Jesus is in king in Jerusalem, there's even sin in that. The Bible speaks about these nations that won't come, they're not going to get rain. It's the heart still. Even with Jesus Christ, king in Jerusalem for a thousand years, when, when Satan's loose, he gathers up a vast army. After Jesus Christ just reigned for a thousand years, what's the problem? It's heart. There's no heart in serving Jesus, even though he's right there. And you're going to deal with people. I, I think two people in my life. Well, if you show me God, you show me Jesus, I'll believe it. Man, Jesus Christ is going to be there in a thousand years, and there is the pit of fire, and there are going to be two people cast off in that pit of fire with Jesus King, with all 12 of the disciples, the priests, and all of us Christians as rulers. I get that. If I get that when I'm witnessing to somebody, I say, well... Oh, you have a brain. Show me. <laughs> mm, can't see your brain. Maybe it's not there. <laughs> yeah, one guy said, well, I had an MRI. I said, how do you know they didn't doctor it? <laughs> they make you feel good. Yeah. Well, he didn't like that too well. So, yeah. again, today is the, the, the main problem is heart. Um, I don't know if I should go. I don't know if this Turn to Jeremiah 17, 9. Now, I'll say this. And this is not doctrinal. But when Adam met Eve for the first, well, the woman, he named her Eve. Right. He said, this shall be bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Okay. He did not mention blood. Now, the Bible speaks about Jesus. The water and blood came out when they, when they pierced this side with that spear. Now, some people think this is a wild idea. I don't. I just don't have enough scripture. But a, a reliable preacher. There is a possibility that in Adam and Eve there was no heart or blood. Okay? All your diseases are in your blood. All of them. It's carried through the bloodstream. Even if you get dehydration with me, they took my white blood count and said, hey, you're dehydrated. That's blood. So the thing is that thinking, and I won't go into what kind of fruit and all that, it was believed, but that wasn't an apple. It doesn't say apple. But it was believed when Adam and Eve took that fruit, that's when they got the secondary system. And with that heart became Cain killing Abel, his brother, because there was no sin. And what we're reading now, what we read in the passages of Matthew and Jeremiah, what would have came with the sin of man inside his body but the heart? That's what we're reading is wicked. And even God says about the nation of Israel, I am going to give you a new heart. Amazing how the devil works. So, Jeremiah 17, 19, I mean, Jeremiah 17, 9, You don't believe the devil trying to interfere with the messages? I do. Oh, look at this. this the, direct, the, the owner of this Bible underlined this passage. Not me. <laughs> this guy has a great note. I, I got this flea mark. The heart. Understand? The heart. These initials and these initials with a heart. Or Cupid shooting you with an arrow through the heart. If Cupid shot you with an arrow through the heart, you're going to bleed to death and die. You're not going to get married and live ever after. It's so foolish, this world. The heart is deceitful. Above all things. Even above politicians and used car salesmen, the heart is deceitful. 
all things. Now a noun is a person, place, or thing. I'm going to throw something out there. This is a wild card. You don't have to believe this. But the heart is a is deceitful above all things. The devil's a thing. He's a person, a kind of person. I don't know how to explain. He's a being. And that says above all things, is it possible our heart is more wicked than the devil? He's a murderer. Isn't that one of the things that says it's, it's traits of the heart? He's a liar and a father. Isn't that one of the traits of the heart? Is not lust of the flesh one of his tools? Well, isn't that one of the traits of the heart? Is not uh, uh, the lust of the flesh, is not that one of the traits of the heart? Is not the pride of life, is not, not one of the traits of the heart? The heart is deceitful above all things. And not only that, desperately wicked. Well, how do you describe Satan? Wicked. Okay, ready for this one? Now, try this on your shrink. Who can know it? Only God. And only God has the prescription that can heal your heart. And it's not medication. It is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Know Him as your Savior. Believe Him as your Savior. Get the new birth. Get in a Bible-believing church. Get in the Bible, King James Bible. Get prayer. Get study. Get seeking God. Do not turn off that light. Now say, God, I don't understand that light you just gave me. I don't want to turn off that light. But Lord, I want, I need help with what light you've given me in your life. Because who can know your heart? Not your husband. Not Tracy. Because there are things we do that you don't even know. There are private lives amongst the four of us right now that none of we Have you ever knew? You wouldn't be here. But God knows. The only way, now what's the only way that God does not know is the evilness of your heart. First John 1 9, you put it under the blood, he's faithful and just to forgive, and he's going to forget. But who knows the heart? We know who knows the heart. It's not man. Now you go, there are people who go to a psychiatrist, and I talk to those people, and listen, I'm sarcastic. But endearingly I say to them, is your psychiatrist seeing a psychiatrist? And they don't think. You might be seeing a man who's seeing a man for the same reason, and he might be seeing that psychiatrist because he's mad at you. <laughs> now, come on, think about it. Here's a guy all day long. I'm going to say eight hours a day. I don't know. I have no idea. You're listening to people's problems all day long, and that's not going to affect you? And you're going to turn to that guy to... Advice. You're going to turn to that guy for hope. How about turning what you do, what you feel, how you do, who, what, where, why, and when, and which? Why not turn to the sinless God who will never sin, who cannot sin, and who will help you? Because He knows you can't lie to God. And when you confess your sins, you know you might be confessing your sins and really not know why you're doing that sin, and yet God knows. And you're doing the best you can to, to, to confess your sins. And God says, hey, I know that heart. David's heart, God said, was after the Lord. David, a, a man's heart after me. Who else ever in the world ever knew that outside of reading the Bible? No one. But God knew it. And God told Samuel, when he's looking at me, he says, Man, look at on the outward appearance. Oh, look at that. Look how attractive. Look how husky and muscular that person is. God says, I look on the heart. David was just a shepherd boy. I guarantee David sang to the Lord. I guarantee God, David worshiped the Lord. I guarantee he looked up at the stars at night with his sheep. I said, God, you made that. I don't know who you are, but that's you. Lord, I don't know who made these sheep or how you made these sheep, but you did it. And he goes on to say, one is says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I have no idea how you did. And once we realize that our heart, our, all right, I've been talking about dealing with people. Let's look at our, our way like that. Let's look at that when God sees us. Now, when God looks on this earth, he sees two people. He sees people who are lost, and he sees people who are saved. You know how he sees saved people? 
you're filthy or you're dirty, or you've been washed by the blood. That's how he sees us. So that's the condition of all man's heart. Jeremiah 18, uh, 17, 9. You, uh, that's what he did. He marked that verse. That's a verse to be marked. So the heart is the source of your salvation. Oh boy. Okay. We got a lot to do. We got more to do in the heart. I think we're going to stop right there. I'll leave with the heart is the source of. I didn't bring a pen. Well, right there. <laughs> oh, I did bring a pen. <laughs> you put it in the pen hole. So we're going to stop right there. We're, so we're going to be picking up on the heart, Lord willing, next week again. But when you're witnessing to people, find out where their heart is. And again, like I said, some people say, oh, I'm an atheist. And sometimes that's just an excuse. You'd be amazed, I'll tell you, because you're witnessing them. You will find their excuses. I, I have, what, you say, about 12 of them? 12 of them, about 12 of them. 12 simple excuses we've heard. It's the same thing, just different words. Yeah. And you'll learn them. Now, right now, I don't have any top of my head, but they're there. One of them is, I'm an atheist. Don't find out. Is I go to church. I go to church. Yes, I got a cross. I got a tattoo. Yeah, that's another you know thing. I know what, sorry. No, no, go ahead. Uh, this one person, he said, oh, I don't believe Jesus is the Son of God. It wasn't the Bible. I don't believe the Bible. I've heard that. Trying yeah. to quit. Yeah, that was yeah. funny. I haven't heard that one yet. I got that one. No, I don't want that. I'm trying to quit. Okay. But, uh, trying to quit. Yeah, I think he told me about that. And the thing is, like like we said today, you get talking to them, yeah, and you get, your, get their mouth going. You know what a judge does, and I have been told by a judge, a judge will get you to talk. Because the more you talk, the more you sink yourself. Get them talking, and then listen. And then you'll find out how to do. And while you listen to them talk, pray. You don't have to do that. I said, Lord God, what's this guy's trouble? What's this guy's problem? And the biggest thing, like with Clint, and when we first met him, he didn't have to, he, he said, what about my bio? Like, yeah, that's a new King James. <laughs> he yeah. read new King James. Yeah. Oh, he does? What are you doing these days? He's doing well. All right, let's pray. Lord God the Father, my heart is wicked. The Bible says it is. And there's sin. And Lord, for the last week, there's definitely been sin. And Lord God, I ask you to wash it and put it in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, as we deal with people, help us to understand their hearts in the light of Jesus Christ. That many, the Bible says, will turn off that light. But there are a few that will want more and more. And grow. Lord, just thank you for this day. Thank you that it's not hot. Thank you for shade. Thank you if it were the rain, Lord God, we would be protected. And Lord, uh, just pray for more people to come. For Jesus' sake, we pray. Amen. Peace. Aw, that's